guys welcome back to the pulse with willie and al how's it going today bro uh pretty good pretty good uh for the record i what i thought was maybe a plane earlier i'm not quite sure what it is but there's like a weird little buzzing i can kind of hear outside so <laughs> just disregard that yeah it it's could the perks be of living right off yeah. the perks of living right off of main street yeah, it so. could be it could be fireflies or it could be uh yeah. an airplane we don't know um yeah hopefully not a boeing so uh ah. <laughs> already starting out so uh guys welcome back to the pulse we've got our 53rd episode today the polishing the turd episode uh so we got some big things to talk about today plenty of stuff to catch up on in baseball and then we are what one day away by the time we drop this episode it is tuesday now but by the time this gets to you guys tomorrow we will be one day away from the start of the NFL season. So, which I forgot that there's a Friday game this week. There is. And oh, it's not means, it's not so in America good. either. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh definitely going to be kind of wild, but let's kick some things off with some Major League Baseball coverage because we didn't cover any of that last week. Um first thing, Danny Jansen, I'm going to let you kind of take the floor on this because uh, I think you'll do a good job of explaining it, but kind of a rare thing that happened in baseball. So go ahead. You, you yeah, put your tattoos so, on and dance. Yeah. So earlier this season, Danny Jansen was um, a catcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. And they were playing a game against the Red Sox. When I got called, he was at bat with 0-1 count when I got called for a rain delay. And, and the game got canceled and they were going to resume, resume at the end of August. In that meantime, he got traded to the Red Sox. So, uh, he got to play uh, both halves. He got to play for the Red Sox. And in the box score, he's on both halves of that box score, which is a, uh, it's a very rare occurrence, which is, which is pretty rad. And you actually explained a very unique part of that box score, too. That uh, he stole a base on himself? Yeah, the, yeah, the pinch runner stole a bit. So the pinch runner like got on base and then immediately stole second. So like Danny Jansen stole off Danny Jansen, which is never not funny to me. <laughs> Definitely a funny thing, but a uh, nice, nice rare occurrence to see in baseball and kind of a, a unique thing that happened. So, uh, well, let's stick with your Red Sox, right? <laughs> uh, they, oh, they had, uh, you know, much to your dismay, but my my dad's approval. Uh, they. <laughs> They played the Tigers this weekend, and so you've got the likely Cy Young Award winner, Scooball, going up there uh, against the Red Sox, and he dominated them. Um, he gave them the business. Yeah, he, he, he business. really did give them the business. And uh, by the way, I, I got to throw this in there just because it was a request. Uh, Uncle Raj uh, gave a nice little shout out to your boys about um, you know how good they've been playing, and I, he said, "Tell him, tell him good." Good job, Red Sox, and he'll know what it means. So, uh, <laughs> feels backhanded coming from your uncle Roger. It definitely, uh, yeah. it probably is. Uh, um, yeah, real quick, can we talk about Scooble? Just like I, that performance Friday night against the Sox mm -hmm. really, um, really just kind of shored up like that. That, uh, sorry, Saturday, uh, against the Sox, eight innings, one run ball, eight strikeouts, like under 100 pitches. It's almost old really school. Anything. Yeah. It, 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 the, Nick Pavetta for the Sox pitched well, just didn't get any run support. And uh, yeah, to me, that really, I think, barring some weird collapse, Cy Young is Scoobles to lose at this point. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and honestly, the Tigers, too, have really kind of come on like gangbusters second half of the season since the break. So yeah. also fun to watch. Yeah, and they're, they're playing in a, what, what seems to be a, kind of underrated division i know you said legally someone has to win that division but your royals that you picked are right there the twins are are slightly ahead of them 
Yeah. Uh, well, the Royals have kind of come back down to earth. They've lost six straight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vinny Pasquino, I uh, broke his, I think his hand. Yeah. They're they're kind of a mess right now. It, it's really just kind of Bobby Witt Jr. doing his best to like carry that team while hitting three fifty. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's a stud. Absolute stud. Um. Now, just uh, you know, we might as well stick with the NL East while while we're there. Uh, but the Orioles they activate Eflin, uh, which is, uh, you know, he he's been out for a couple months now. Is that right? Yeah. He. Uh, yeah. No. He. They, Baltimore traded for him and it, and then immediately kind of put him on the I, uh, IR or IL just because uh, has, I think he had some like shoulder issues and they were just they weren't going to mess around with that so. But then he came back and pitched lights out. So yeah, cool. struck out nine. So yeah, real good for them. Exactly what that team needs. Um, another guy that can do that. So and Baltimore's like half game out of the division, and they yeah. are that 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 AL East is going to be a dogfight the rest of the way between the two of them. Yeah, so it's 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 really interesting because it feels like it's been that way for the last three to four months. With like one team moving ahead slightly, the other team edging them off, then them taking a slight lead, then the the Yankees ending up back in there, the Orioles overtaking them, like they're both neck and neck. Baltimore scheduled the rest of the way. They played Detroit twice. They play the Yankees. They play the Twins. Uh, they play the Giants, which the Giants are they are what they are. But like their schedule the rest of the way is not a cakewalk. Yeah, a lot of a lot of playoff teams. Um, yeah, and these games they mean something now, which is very cool. Uh, a yeah. lot of the divisions that we're going to go through here do the games don't really matter that much because teams have such a big lead, but uh, definitely matters in the NL East. Uh, how are how are you feeling about the Yankees? Are they you feeling like they're dangerous or what's the deal with them? Sorry, motorcycle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, off- offensively they are. They're the best offense in the league. Their run differential, I if last I checked, I think they had the best run differential in the league. Um, that being said, their pitching is – they are just cobbling that together at this point. And uh, they have a good bullpen, good hitting. Starting pitching is uh, – it's kind of shaky. But, you know, when you have a, a run differential of plus 125, I don't think it really matters. So, um, so yeah, you know – People still pitch the judge, which I don't understand. Um, yeah, that's confusing to me, too. Yeah. I, like, take your chances with Soto and Stanton in that lineup. I, and, like, if they kill you, you can live with that. Like, mm-hmm. but, yeah, people keep, seem to keep pitching the judge, and judge keeps hitting home runs. So yeah, he keeps uh, making them pay. That's Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. so I, I, I think the Yankees are going to be okay. I Their lack of starting pitching does concern me, but... If they're going to keep hitting the cover and off the ball like they are, I guess it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, well, let's uh moving into the the AL Central. We've got Cleveland, and I know we talked about them just a minute ago. They they've kind of staved off Kansas City. I know you talked about what what's going on with them. Uh, the Twins are they? Uh, do you think Cleveland's going to be able to hold them off, uh, or are the Twins just coming on too strong for them to be able to to keep hold of that division? The Twins are just kind of lurking just enough. I mean, they won the division last year. They essentially ran back the same team this year. I, they're they're playing tough down the stretch. Like they're not they're not rolling over. Both both them and the Royals are have the you know two of the three wild card spots, with Baltimore being the other one. I, I, Cleveland was up ten games in this division in June. So it's not out of the realm of possibility for me. I, I think Cleveland has too much offensively, but Minnesota, like if you tell me they win the division, I'm not going to be like shocked by that. I they, They've, they've hung around all season. They've played consistent. Like it's not much more you can ask of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, just moving out West with Houston, I mean, they've just taken the commanding lead out there in, in that division. Well, and it's funny because they got off to such a terrible start to the season that a lot of people wrote them off, forgetting that they still have decent players on that team. Uh, do you see anyone challenging them? Or how how do you see their chances come playoff time? They, Houston is kind of doing this based off of, like, they just have that DNA of 
all those guys on that team have done this before. They've been there before. Um, kind of their thing is like their starting pitching has been more consistent. But like, and they have the guys. They have Framer Valdez. They have Verlander. Like they have guys that can pitch big in the playoffs. I, I just feel like this is the year with Houston where like because Houston has played so much playoff baseball since 2017, like the, the, the I feel like that's finally going to catch up with them. Mm-hmm. And I think you saw that at the beginning of the year where they just couldn't put anything together. Um, and, and really for them, it's just how far offensively can Jordan Alvarez carry them. And he's still like murdering the baseball, like nobody's business. So, but yeah. Well, we've got they that. Do, they are fortunate. They play in kind of a weak division this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, Seattle sits back, but they Seattle's tanked. not really. Yeah. Yeah. Once you fire the manager midseason like that, it's not it, good. It wasn't even midseason either. It was, what, beginning of August. Like, yeah. Like, that's, oh, that is tough. Like, they were leading that division by a lot, and then all of a sudden it just, they Houston bridged the gap, and it was over. Um. It's like a month, nightmare month for them. Uh, In the National League, now the Phillies, they've increased their lead in the NL East to seven games. They just took three out of four from the Braves. Um, I did think my Braves played them tough. If you look at it, they, you know, the Braves ended up taking one game from them, but the games that they lost were all three runs or less. In fact, they won, lost one by one, two, and three runs. And one of those games, too, I think it was the Friday night game, they mm -hmm. had a lead going into the late innings, and Atlanta's bullpen just kind of yeah. did Atlanta bullpen things like that's that's a tough thing. Um, and I I don't I don't see where it is here. May, you better not have deleted it on the notes because I definitely want to mention it. Uh, but your boy Chris Sale. Uh, Wait, that's all we're gonna talk about with Atlanta is like hey yeah yeah listen are- listen. Uh, I, there's other stuff I want to mention about them, but okay. I I gotta mention Chris Sale because like how bad does this burn? Like you went out, had a hot date, woke up the next day, you're burning from that, or like what? Wh- like how does this feel? Is it a slow burn? Is it a a prickly burn? Like how is what type of burn is this? Because I remember you telling me like you're gonna get five starts out of him, and then it's gonna be over. But he's actually been <laughs> really dominant this year. Like I went back and looked at it. I'm pissed that I can't find it in my notes. He hasn't given up more than three runs in a game and tw- more than twice this season. He's been very, yeah, no. very good this year. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, he's the reason at this point that they're hanging around. Yeah. Like, like it's not great, and I hate it. And, <laughs> yeah, I just hate it. Yeah. That's, he, he, to be honest with you, too, it's the being a Red Sox fan for as long as I have. Mm-hmm. I've seen this thing more times than I care to admit. Yeah, <laughs> we get off of somebody because like they've just been ass for us, and then they go turn around and have a career year. Like Chris Sale is probably going to win the Cy Young Award this year, and yeah, that guy fucking fell off his bicycle biking home from lunch from rehab and was out for the rest. Of the- like we just, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. So he's there, and you're not kidding either. Like, unless someone makes a very drastic change, he's pitching tonight, I think, against the White Sox. Um, so you can pencil him in for a win, but uh, oh, we know it, yeah. (laughs) But he got they're probably Snickers probably trying to figure out if he can get him two starts against the White Sox, but um, he's pretty much locked up the Cy Young unless something crazy happens. And he's had a great year doing it, it's just too bad for the Braves. Like, offense hasn't come on until late. Um, and even now, like, I mean, they're sitting with their two best players on the IL, they've been out for the year. Um, Austin Riley, you know, he just got hurt what a, a few weeks ago. He's out yeah. likely for the season. It just like when it rains, it pours, man. And I don't want to be a downer about it, but they're in win now mode. They definitely are. They like they've got a few guys locked up for a few years. I know that, but they've got to win now. This is the window. That you know that the Dodgers. It seems like are just going to get better because they're going to go out and snag whatever free agents are out there. They got the money to do it. 
The Padres are going to be around. They're going to be tough. Milwaukee seems to be climbing the ranks. Philly's not going anywhere. Yeah. So, yep. Hey, I mean, shit, real quick. Yeah. Uh, we, you talk about you spoke talked about the White Sox for a minute. In their last forty five games, they're four and forty one. Love to see it. Yeah, that's love just, to see it. That's just brutal, man. Like I, I actually, I think there was an article about them saying that they've lost the 20th game in a row for one of their starting pitchers. I saw that. Yeah. That is just, and I, I had to click on him to see what he looks like. I want to cry, dude. That is just awful. Awful. Yeah. You could tell he's probably a nice guy, but holy shit, man. Losing 20 games in a row is just, that's brutal. How do you want to show up to work? Yeah, no, they they've had losing streaks this year of 11, 15 and 21 respectively. Yeah, that's that it's it's just not good, man. Um yeah, not, not good no. at all. Um anything else you wanted to mention before we move to the NL Central? Um no, it, it's just the Phillies are just kind of holding pace right now. Um Phillies bullpen still hasn't gotten any better, which kind of concerns me. Um but I guess if you have good enough starters, maybe it doesn't matter. But uh, just something to look out for again. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, Milwaukee, they're running away with the NL Central. I'm not sure there's much we need to say about them. But Other than uh, Yelich done for the year with back surgery, and honestly, they're a team that, like, if you're, if you're one of the wild card teams, you kind of want to play Milwaukee round one. Like... Yeah. For a team that's won the division, they're they're kind of just kind of they're, they're just kind of doing their thing and I, I, they're the team you kind of want to play in round 1. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so. moving out. Oh, there it is. I, I I didn't realize I put my sale notes at the end, but uh Dodgers up next, right? So they've been able to kind of hold off Arizona and San Diego. Uh but Kershaw's now hurt. Um did they put him on the IL? I know they were talking. They did. Okay. Yeah. yeah that. Yeah. That's not good for them. Um, but it's really going to be how um, how well they can string it together at the end of the year here. Yeah, offensively they're still just doing Dodgers things. Mm -hmm. um, Shohei Otani yesterday stole three bases um, because he's trying to be the first fifty fifty guy. Yeah. Which is hilarious. Um, and it looks like he's probably going to do it. And it's... especially after Acuna last year set the record for what for being the, a 40, 40 guy or 40, 70 guy, 40, 70. Oh yeah. So yeah. Otani's probably not going to get that, but, uh, no. w let's not rule it out. If he's stealing three a game, he's on pace. So, um, yeah, no, but first 50, 50 guy looks like, which is he, and before this year, he was just like, eh, ceiling bases, whatever. And now he's he's made it his life's mission. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's an awesome player, too. Really, really cool. Uh, anything else you want to cover in Major League Baseball before we move forward here? No, it's uh, last month of the regular season. A uh, lot of close races. And the NL wildcard race, especially, is, mm -hmm. is really interesting to look at. And, uh, if you know, I because I don't think my Red Sox are gonna are gonna make the playoffs. So I, I'm really what I'm rooting for at this point is to Atlanta to blow it. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm rooting for. Oh my god! Especially if the Mets overtake you. Yeah, that's that would not be fun. But uh, I do feel good knowing that the Mets probably won't do anything even if they do overtake us. So I feel like we're a dangerous right. team if we make the playoffs. It's not like hey, we're excited we play Atlanta. Uh, when the Mets win the World Series in two months, I, I can we play this clip back? Yeah, we can. Just like, be like, yeah, we can. Don't, that, that, that better not happen, man. But um, speaking of guys that did kind of blow it, let's uh, move on to the NFL. Uh, Brandon Ayuk. Now. It's over. The saga uh, is over. Yeah. So I, I don't want to spend a lot on the, a lot of time on this because I don't think he deserves a lot of time on it. Uh Glad he got paid. Not really. Um, but I just don't like today's way of doing business in the NFL from either side, the player standpoint, the owner standpoint. Um, he literally signed the same goddamn contract that was offered to him three weeks ago. I know that's the funny part. That's that's the part that's really funny to me. For me, like, dude, if you don't want to participate in training camp, 
just come out and say it. It's yeah. like it, what, what plays in my head is that clip from The Office with Kelly and her talking with Daryl and being like, whoever just says exactly what's on their mind, like what kind of person does that? And like, if you don't want to play, if you don't want to practice, just yeah. don't say you don't want to. But to drag it out through this and make it look like the, you, you know, the, it just you're not married to the team. You're not married to your players. You're not any of that. But you're you're part of that locker room. This bullshit game of one foot in the door, one foot out. I don't care. I'll go somewhere else. They'll pay me. Good dude. I would have loved to yeah. see him go to Pittsburgh and absolutely suck there. I would have yeah. loved it. I don't I, think he I, realized how good he has it there. Yeah. Well, I think too. Well, my thing is, and I know we've kind of gone back and forth on this. Like, I, I am pro players getting paid, mm-hmm. especially in football. Yeah. Especially in a sport that you don't have a lot of time to make a lot of money. Right. So I'm, I'm all for that. I mm-hmm. just, I think that's. The confusing part to me was that he took the deal that was offered to him three weeks ago. Yeah. And I was just like, what are we doing? Like, what are we doing here? Um, that being said, I I know I was leery of like not drafting him in fantasy this year because mm-hmm. because he hasn't had any training camp reps. Like Yeah. And also San Francisco, I don't know I've said this, they've got the year from hell stink already on them a little bit, I think. Uh and so, he's a big reason for that, man. I mean, we'll, we'll get to the other part of that, really, but I, I just want to say, really like, true. that, yeah, I agree. Brandon Ayuk better not drop a damn ball this year. Well, I, that's not possible. I, I'm telling you, dude, the money that he just got paid and the temper tantrum he threw and watching him walk in and kind of, like, smugly sign that contract pissed me <laughs> off so bad, man. It pissed me off well, like you wouldn't believe. We're gonna we're gonna talk about Jamar Chase, and Jamar Chase is kind of doing the same thing. Right uh, now. he's not holding out though. He's at least he's holding in. Partic- he's not participating in practice either. I think he's showing up to practice and just not participating. In he it. Like, he when, was before. He was before. I, yeah, I just think he's, just like, he's not going on social media demanding trades. He's not saying like, oh yeah, like put. Do it taking interviews saying like, oh yeah, my this guy, we're friends, like I should be traded there. He's not doing any of that. I, I just think he yeah. handles it completely different. And if anything, he's kind of done a funny thing in saying that I want to get paid one penny more than JJ. I think that is awesome. That yeah. is really funny. Well, because like if you think about it, like there are only, in my eyes, there are only two other receivers besides Justin Jefferson that are on his level. It's Jamar Chase and Tyree Hill. Mm. I put CD to up me, there too, but um, yeah, that's that's fair. That could be debated. Okay, I, I get that. Um, but yeah, like I, so I don't blame him. I the thing that worries me with Jamar Chase a little, like he's starting to do this thing now where he's just like showing up to practice. He showed up to practice late. Mm-hmm. And just in street clothes and isn't participating and like I I just worry about that a little bit. Like I I mean like I didn't draft him either of my fantasy teams, so I'm I can wash my hands of that, but like mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's just like if we're gonna like roast Ayuk for doing that, we gotta roast Jamar Chase too, like because it's like kind of weird to do, like especially since he spent all summer like kind of participating in like training camp and then for him at the end to be like no nah, i'm good like yeah oh man okay so maybe maybe they both deserve it a little bit yeah. i just think i think the attitude behind it is a little bit different and that's what i didn't care for like he didn't demand a trade request he didn't do any of that stuff and i actually i actually feel like he's a better receiver <laughs> than oh, brandon Ayuk. um oh yeah for sure. But that that's just my personal opinion on it. Um I I don't know. I Cincinnati's got Cincinnati's gotta pay him. They yeah, do. I think like, they do. They're they're notorious for not really negotiating before contracts are up, but I think they should pay him. I think he deserves it. But they did it, it with Burrow, though. So like if they can do it with Burrow, then they can do it with Chase. Yeah. I also like you said, man, the, the not getting the training camp reps definitely has an impact i think personally that um i anticipate a slow start for them 
I, I really do. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I think Burrow, it's going to take them a little bit. I mean, I know they've got that relationship, uh, but I think that it's going to take a little bit for them to be able to, to get into the swing of things. And if you remember in previous seasons, like most of the time it was Burrow was hurt uh, that they got off to a slow start, but I don't know. I just, I want to see, you know, Cincinnati, I picked to win the Super Bowl, So I'd really like to see it. Um, <laughs> hey, and don't you have to admit- you have Chase on one of your fantasy Yeah, teams. I do. I do. I, I drafted yeah. him. So I, I really want to see him in there. Um, but uh, I just want to touch on Trent Williams real quick because we didn't we skipped over him a little bit, but I feel like he needs to be talked about because there's a few th- issues that I, I find with the Trent Williams holdout. First of all, I, I think he's a very good player, uh, possibly the best left tackle in football and a guy that you need on your on your lineup, especially if he's on your team, you need him playing. Yeah. Um, and you kind of need him happy, but I don't like the way that, that this hurts Purdy. I don't like the way this hurts McCaffrey. I don't like the way it hurts this offensive line, this offense, this team, this locker room. He's the dude carrying the big boom box out of the locker room. We yeah. need and, him there. And as somebody that drafted Brock Purdy on our gear, in our gear team league, like, yeah, I, Believe me, I'm real concerned about that. Yeah. I am real concerned. I so. just hope John Lynch is able to figure it out. Uh, because well, this is kind of the last, this seems like this is the last year of the window for the 49ers because Purdy's yeah. going to get paid soon. And I don't know how many years Trent Williams has left either. Um, yeah. So well, for a guy, for a guy who's like mid to late 30, he's still the best left tackle in the game. And it's not even. It's not even really close. Yeah. I mean, there's other guys coming up, but yeah, he's definitely, you got him on your team. You want him in there. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to mention Hassan Reddick. Like we've talked about that before, but hopefully they figure out, they're talking about potential trade partners now and stuff, but he really screws himself. It's it's no longer 50,000 a day. It's like almost 900,000. It's game checks that he's going to get fined if he's not there on game day. Um, yeah. So hopefully it's worth it, man. Hopefully he gets that figured out because not only is he going to get find a game check, but he's going to have to write a nice big fat check to the New York jets, um, paying them back for all the time he's missed. So, um, kind of a sad story, a little somber, Ricky Pearsall. Um, yeah, man. Um, just, uh, aside from what the incident that happened, he was a little banged up, got hurt at training camp a few times in the, in the preseason too. Um, but, just a very scary situation with an attempted robbery. I, I think they said it was a 17 year old kid. Um, yeah. That ends up pulling a gun on him and shoots him in the chest. Uh, he is, um, he went to the hospital, but he walked to the ambulance. So I'm assuming he's going to be okay. Uh, but he's definitely going to miss the four first four weeks of football, but just very lucky to be alive. Very scary. And without like putting a political twist on this or anything, like just choose kindness please like yeah uh, i just maybe you got something else you want to say on it well you know how i like joke about this is the year from hell for the 49ers Mm -hmm. this this is really starting to put into notion that this might be the year from hell for the 49ers Mm -hmm. like when you have your dudes get shot like yeah that's that's tough like and it sounds like he he was just pure souls in the wrong place wrong time got robbed and uh He's very lucky to be alive. I don't and, know yeah. why you're robbing NFL players. Like those dudes are big people. They're not normal sized human beings. Now Ricky Pearsall isn't a giant, um, but I just don't know. Like it's like yeah, let's pick the most physically fit person to go and rob. That seems reasonable. Um, yeah, but if you have a gun like that, kind of that's kind of a great equalizer. Yeah, I guess so. Like, um. Okay, so spe- speedy recovery for him. We're hoping, and uh, you know, glad yeah. glad he's all right. We don't want to also leading story now. The leading candidate for comeback player of the year, gotta be, gotta be. Put your bets yeah. in. Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna beat Demar Hamlin, but it's um, Hamlin. Did, yeah, he didn't win it, which is that, that's surprising. Um, so <laughs> Ricky's gonna be like, hey, what do you have to do to to, to win yeah, it? But if, yeah, if you if you die, that's not enough. That's no. not enough. No. Nope. Um cuz Joe Flacco will come after you. Dude. I mean Joe Flacco was special, but I understand, right? Like even Joe Flacco was like, "Wait, what?" No. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah. 
Um, in news about your boys, Drake May, uh, not named the starter. Uh, Thank goodness. Thank fucking goodness. Okay, so Mayo names Brissett as the starting QB, and uh, like I get your feelings on it now, but why do you think that's a good thing? Oh, because we have such a shitty offensive line that like if we're gonna let one of the two people get murdered, we're gonna let Jacoby Brissett get murdered because Drake May. They spent a third, uh, the number three pick in the draft on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. So I don't want to see him get get murdered. And also, he's. Uh, I mean, he's. Uh, Brissett was hurt too. I know he's going to be okay. It looks like for week one, but he's already banged yeah. up. No, yeah, but that that offensive line, like you just kind of watched it. Whoever was back there, like dudes just running for their lives mm-hmm. after like two seconds. Like it's not good, man. Uh, yeah. I, so when, so when Mayo was like, hey, we're going to start with that, I, I couldn't have been happier. <laughs> I could not have been happier. I think you'll see him, I think you'll see Drake May around like week nine, week 10, maybe. Yeah. Uh, But you're going to, Brissette's going to take the brunt of this because our schedule is brutal to start. So, well, actually, your schedule's brutal all year. You guys aren't favored in one game. <laughs> nah. Uh, so, nah. which is kind of rare, but look, as long as we don't go winless. I just I don't want to go winless. We'd have to call you the Detroit Patriots. Um, how dare you? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else you want to cover uh, or that we didn't mention in NFL news? Uh, no, no. It was, like I said, uh, Ricky Pierce all like, again, just hope he gets well. And uh, yeah, I'm ready for football, man. Yeah. And let's, uh, let's talk about some games. Yeah, absolutely. Woo. So we'll, we're going to break it down. Just three games that we've got here. Baltimore, Kansas City. Kansas City gets three points on it. Over-unders, 46 and a half. Uh, opening night, right? And, like, what could be a better rematch than the AFC title game? Uh, I really – um like, you go ahead. Take take the reins. What, what's your thoughts on this? First of all, I'm so looking forward to this game that I usually have a game night on Thursdays with friends. I've already canceled that. Because I just want to stay home. I just I don't have to work in the morning. So I can stay up late. I can watch this game. And I... This is a big game for Baltimore. Mm-hmm. This is a... Hey, Kansas City came into our house and kind of humiliated us a little bit. And kind of... Kind of out... Kind of out physical us are on the line. I think Baltimore... I think Baltimore is going to win this game. I do. Wow. I, because for as good as that Baltimore, uh, as good as that Kansas City defense was last year, cool. Stopping Lamar, cool. Hard enough. But now you have to stop Derrick Henry. There's a threat. You either have to stop Lamar or Derrick Henry. Good luck. And Derrick Henry just running it out of the gun, which I think they're going to do a lot of. Good luck. Yeah. Have, have fun trying to take. So you're telling me that Derrick Henry gets a running head start and you have to tackle him? Have fun. Yeah. I I feel a little different. And the only reason being is I, I feel like they've lost a lot of pieces. And if, if we didn't have a better uh, experiment of that last year, we saw it in Philly with uh, yeah. coordinators leaving. And I know you're you're really high in McDonald. And I know he's a big piece. Uh, most of the defensive pieces are, are hmm, not most of them. Some of them are still there. Uh, they lost yeah. Geno Stone, right? Um, Jadavian Clowney, he's gone as well. Uh, they bring back Van Noy. Uh, Queen's gone. Uh, just, it's a little rough. They've they replaced three starters on that offensive line. And yeah, they added Derrick Henry, but I really want to see this in action first. Uh, John Harbaugh is going to put together a good football team. So I expect that they're going to be competitive. But I also know uh, how good... Uh, the Chiefs are going to be this year. We've seen it already. They've added firepower to that offense by bringing in Marquise Brown. Rasheed Rice is back, which it looks like he's not going to be getting a suspension anytime soon. They add, which is wild. Yeah, they I, I, they add Xavier Worthy. Uh, you know, they, they just – yeah. Am, am I the only one that – everybody seems to think that Marquise Brown's an addition – I just feel like I've seen him play on enough teams now to like tell you that that's not the case. I mean, he was like, pretty good in Baltimore. I don't think he did that well in Arizona because him and Kyler didn't really get to play together that much. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's okay. Listen, I've been a doubter of him too. 
But I just think in this offense, you don't have to be particularly great. Mahomes is going to find a way to get you the ball. He's never going to be single covered or uh, double covered. I'm sorry. He's never going to be double covered. It's always going to be Rasheed Rice or Travis Kelsey. So he, all he's got to do is beat single coverage, which he's capable of doing. Uh, and and honestly, like in my mind, I think he's the fourth option on this team. Yeah. You know, if, if Mahomes is throwing the ball. Things that I, I worry me a little bit about Kansas City, I feel like there's, from the preseason stuff that I watched, I feel like there's a slight regression with them on defense. I just, I saw a lot where they just, and I know they didn't play a lot of their first string guys. I get that. But like, what what worries me is I think they might be a little thin on defense, and I I just watched a lot of their second team guys just get torched over and over again in the preseason. And like, that doesn't really bode well. No, like, no, you got to have depth. You do. You do. And I think that's the thing that worries me with Casey. I think with Mahomes as your quarterback, like I said, I think you can pencil Casey in for 12 wins. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let him win the division. But cool. you don't think this is one of them. I don't think this is because I think this game means a lot to Baltimore. Because the way Kansas City kind of did them in last year in their house in January. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, I'm going to go this, Kansas City with this because I just think that the Super Bowl champs at home, they give them the rings. Like, it's a special night. And I Mahomes just always finds a way, man. Like, it just – it always happens. Do you uh, know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of that 49ers-Eagles game last year where I told you, it was like, hey, man, the 49ers probably have had this circled on their calendar mm-hmm. ever since the schedules came out. And I think this is a big get up game for Baltimore. I really yeah. do. I mean, don't forget too, Baltimore was a very dominant team and unquestioned the best team in football last year. They destroyed all the best teams in the NFC that we thought like, oh, okay. You know, I wonder if they're probably going to lose that game. Remember Brock Purdy ended up getting intercepted, what, four times in that game against Baltimore? Uh, yeah. They destroyed Seattle. They destroyed Detroit. It was brutal. Yeah, the Rams hung in there, but it, the Ravens still won that game. Uh, it was. You know what? I you know what's going to be cool about this game too is the pretty much the two best kickers in the league play for these teams. Yeah. So even even if it's like a three and out, like it's you're going to get a pretty much an automatic three points from either Tucker or Bucker. Mm-hmm. So like, um, but that being said, I think Baltimore wins this game thirty one thirty. Okay. I, I think there are some points that are going to be put up because I think both offenses are really talented. And I and I think you have two generational quarterbacks where it's not going to matter really. I'm what actually the get, throws out of. I'm going 34 24 Kansas City. So oh, so you think Kansas City is going like, to? I, I don't. I don't think it's going to be a lot. I think at the fourth quarter they're going to push and, and drive, get that last drive, and kind of solidify it. Um, but okay. I think it will be close up to that point. You know, three point game at that point, and then maybe turnover something like that at the end, and then they go down and capitalize on it. But. Uh, yeah, it should be an interesting one. And I know you had mentioned it earlier. Dude, we, we got a game in Brazil this year. So, on Friday night. Yeah. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, so this is going to be awesome. So we've got – it's Green Bay and Philly gets credit for the home game uh, with yeah. this. Uh, Philly's getting three points, and the over-under is going to be 48 and a half. So just two more than the uh, Kansas City and Baltimore. Uh, but Green Bay, listen, Jordan Love and company, they, they're going to face again, face off against Jalen Hurts in this high-powered, retooled Eagles offense. Um, uh, Jason Kelsey-less offense. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about this. I know you're really excited for this matchup, so let, let's break this down. What do we got going on here? I, I think with Green Bay, they have the deepest pl- deepest receiver tree in the, in the league this year. Like, they just – they're so talented at receiver – and they're all super young too, um, and I I think it really comes down to which Jordan Love are we getting? Yeah, are we getting the guy till up till Thanksgiving who just seemed a little lost and couldn't figure it out, or are we get the guy that went to Dallas in the playoffs and hung up forty plus on him? Like yeah, it, like it, it really depends. And I, I I think for the Eagles, I well I think for both teams this is a statement game, and I think this is the game that you read about. Monday morning, whoever loses this game, is there's going to be a huge overreaction of, oh no, what's wrong with him? Absolutely. Um, um, and, yeah. and I think Green Bay is going to hang tough with Philly. I do. 
really just has too many weapons. I, I just like I don't I don't really. I mean, Green Bay has an okay defense, but I just don't understand how you're stopping all those weapons on Philly. I I don't. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see these new look Philadelphia Eagles with adding Saquon, Jahan Dotson, um, you know, Jalen Hurts supposedly squashing the beef with Nick Sirianni. Um, you still but, have A.J. Brown, Devonta yeah, Smith, yeah, I Dallas know. Potter. You're kind like, of excited because you've got that that stack of Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown. So I do. You want do. this. They it's are, not clouding your judgment at all, is it? No, no, okay. they're not. But I really need them to, you know, do yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> uh, week one. I need them week one to really Yeah. Just make you uh, feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but for reals though, I, I really I have Philly in this game. I, I think Green Bay is gonna hang around with them for a while. I I think ultimately when it's all said and done, I, I think this is a, a 37-21 Philly. Yeah, I I actually was gonna go th- it was gonna be 34-20. So I thought it was gonna be yeah. similar to the, the previous game. But the, the big thing for me, and I just want to say this before moving on, is uh I really think the addition of Vic Fangio on defense as a, a defensive coordinator, I think that's gonna have a big impact on this team. Cooper DeGene, I, I wanna see him play. I'm really excited to see what he can bring to this defense. Um as you yeah. as you mentioned, they they added guys, they brought Huff in. Um, CJ Gardner Johnson, you know, he's, he's there. I want to see Jordan Davis. I, I, you know, people forget Jalen Carter's on this team too. There's, they've got a lot of big name guys on this defense. I want to see how it's going to, how it's going to work. So, uh, and, and, Vic, and I think I was just going to say Vic Fangio is a defensive yeah. guru. Let's see what he's able yeah. to do with this team. Well, I think two things, I think anybody that's a huge upgrade over Matt Patricia calling plays last year. So, um, but two, I, this, I think really set the tone for Philly because Philly has the bullseye on their back. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of expectations that they're going to win the Super Bowl this year with the team they've put together. And like, that's not having those expectations is tough. So this is a really big, oh, this is a really big test early on for them. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead. We will move on the last game that we're going to cover. Um, and I, this is kind of an interesting one to me. So we got the jets traveling out West. Uh, they're playing at San Francisco, San Francisco gets three and a half, uh, the over under on it's 43 and a half. And I just, I feel like there's a certain level of banality to this story of Aaron Rodgers, right? Like we've been there, seen this before, like, Monday night football, the first week of the season, Aaron Rodgers in a Jets uniform. Like, it's the same thing over and over again. I hope it's not the same ending. Yeah, if he can make it to play five, I think the Jets would really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, That being said, this is a a homecoming for Rodgers of sorts. You know, he went to Cal. Um, I, this was the hardest game for me to pick. Because I just there's there's a lot of things that concern me on both sides of the ball. Yeah. First of all, the J- the Jets and the lack of an offensive line with one with Bosa and Warner coming at Aaron Rodgers like that 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 worries me. That legitimately worries me. Like Rodgers will obviously throw it out, get rid of it quick, but like Warner and Bosa are both pretty quick. So uh, good luck with that. But also, too, if you don't have – if the 49ers don't have Trent Williams, the Jets' defense is no laughing matter either. Like they're really good. And I, and I think this is going to be uh, a game of, like, whose defensive line just plays better. Yeah, I – I mean, I don't want to say that you're going to regret saying this, but – I think you got to give more credit to the moves they made in the off season for, for the jets on the offensive line. They end up bringing Moses over from, from Baltimore. Uh, they, they ended up getting a, a draft, uh, you know, I think it was a first round draft pick that they used on alignment. Uh, I really think they're going to be better than, uh, than they have been. They, it was going to be a disaster. I think no matter what last year, you can't have a quarterback hold the ball for six seconds and wonder why he's getting sacked. It, it, it's the air and Aaron it's Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers well, Aaron Rodgers doesn't do that. That's the thing. If he does, he's going to scramble out and he's going to be okay. But Zach Wilson, the reason he got sacked so much and the reason he got hit so much was 
He's not an expert level decision maker. Aaron Rodgers was one of the best processors ever in the game. I just think this team is going to be better than people are expecting. I really think they're going to show it this week too. I'm not, I don't know if they're going to win. I'm just saying that, and I'm not, you know what? I'll pick them to win. I'll change my pick. I'll change my pick. Um, but f- for me, I really want to see this Rogers Wilson combo. And I I'm interested to see how healthy Mike Williams is. Um, I'll pick the jets to win. I'll pick the jets to win 24, 21. I really want to see Aaron Rodgers and what the, how healed that Achilles really is. Um, because with the 49ers, he's going to have to get out of the pocket. He is going to have to mm-hmm. with Warner and Bosa. Like they're just going to pin their ears back. And like, that's, that pocket's going to collapse very quickly. And I, I, I'm really interested to see what Rogers can do off that busted Achilles. History says like, you don't ever really come back the same after that, especially guys that at that, that age. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, and the 49ers, like they're at home. And I, I think with that pedigree, like, you know, the 49ers, they, you know, there's, they have a lot of Super Bowl hangover and they lost that game in a, a heartbreaking fashion. I, I think I got the 49ers in this one. Okay. I think it's going to be close though. I, I think it's going to be 24, 21, 49ers. Oh, so the opposite of what I picked. Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. just think, dude, Aaron Rodgers, I got to say this, man. He's got an ace in the hole with, you know, that nice little ace in his pocket that he can pull out. It's called Brees Hall. Um, and Aaron Rodgers has been notorious for being able to utilize running backs. Not quite like your your boy, Captain Checkdown, um, but uh, <laughs> which I know he's your favorite, man. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't draft him. But uh, I thought about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, just as like a mockery type thing. But uh Brees Hall, I think you're gonna see you're gonna see two of the best running backs in the league running the ball. And I think the one that has the better offensive line right now is gonna be in green. He's not gonna be in red. Uh maybe things change by that. But you're not saying this because you may or may not have taken Brees Hall in our guillotine draft. Oh, I took him because I know how good he is. Uh that's the okay. exact reason. I took him his rookie year and then unfortunately he tore his ACL, but he was he one. Was. He was one of the best running backs then too. He yeah, just he was. didn't get a chance to show it. So, uh, you can kind of guess what we're gonna do next here because I can already tell it's getting a little testy. So we're gonna go into uh, fantasy football, and and, and this is a, a much anticipated segment that we have because oh, yeah. um, Al and I had our fantasy football drafts this past weekend. Uh, actually, Sunday was kind of nice for my wife because she got rid of me for about eight hours. Uh, which was awesome, yeah. but well, it's because you're in like 62 leagues. Yeah, in two. you're in two, right? Yeah, just the two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but listen, it was fun, highly anticipated. Um, however, the anticipation is going to be short lived because uh, Al and I will face off in week one of of the league that we share, uh, Guillotine yeah. League, where we're, we're always facing off every week, but. Uh, in our 12-team PPR league, we are playing each other the first week, and there's no home field advantage. Uh, there's no nope. bl- there's no blanket for him to cry in. There's no cozy fire to warm up next to. There is just nope. Willie Creeman's team coming for you. Uh, yeah. So uh, below in the comments, you will find Al's home address. Please make sure to send him flowers because it will hurt. It will not be over quick, and you will not yeah. enjoy this. Um, and if you choose to, you may donate to his OnlyFans in the comments below as well. Uh, Perfect. so, uh, but all jokes aside, I think we both have very good teams. Um, and can we, yeah. agree, can we agree on that? Yeah. I feel a lot better about the league that you and I are in the, the non guillotine, the best. Yeah. I feel really good about that team. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I may, I, I went with a strategy and I drafted George Kittle and Kyle Pitts pretty much with back-to-back picks mm-hmm. um, to really kind of corner the tight end market. Um, yeah. And that, I think one of two things happens. I either just get to play both. Hopefully they both produce or somebody's going to get desperate, AKA maybe Shane, and is going to need a tight end. And. Oh man. So it's okay. Uh, yeah. It's okay. okay. Well, listen, um, I'm, I really like Al's team. And, and to be honest, we were drafting in completely different spots. You were up at what? 11. Is that right? Yeah. 11. The Bennett league was 11. And that okay. Was, That's that tough. Was rough. Um, yeah. I was down at 
four, I think. I think I four or five. I think I was at yeah. You were you were mid first round. If I remember. Yeah, mid yeah. first round. But I ended up snagging Tyreek Hill, and then I came back. Cooper Cup was there. Um, I I took Rasheed Rice after that, and then I did something I don't usually do, and that's take a quarterback early. And I took Patrick Mahomes in the fourth round to pair up with, um, to pair up with Rasheed Rice, and I think that's just going to be a very dynamic duo. So I kind of copied what Al was doing, but when I yeah. saw Al. Draft you drafted Jameer Gibbs in the first round is am I right? Because I needed a running back, and uh, the problem with picking at eleven is like at that point, like running backs, there aren't there isn't anything much left, and mm-hmm. I fear with Jameer Gibbs, he uh, high upside, you know, he's gonna, big time. He's gonna he's gonna catch a lot of passes, and I think he's he's gonna be really the main ball carrier. So like I, assuming he stays healthy, I felt good about that. Well, this is the way I see it too, and this is why I really liked your team, at least the beginning parts of it. Uh, and the, you know, other things we can disagree. And I've had Kittle in the past, really liked him, even though he's very inconsistent. Like I told you, he's going to win you a couple weeks. Pitts, hopefully, this is the year that he finally gets a quarterback there. Um, if and, not, I'm done with Pitts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, this is yeah. the thing. He's a physical freak. I think he's going to do very well for you, and I think you're going to be very pleased. It's going to feel like you have a wide receiver there. Um, so I think yeah. that's going to be a good thing for you. Uh, but the, all the guys you drafted were from very good offenses. So Jameer Gibbs running behind the best offensive line in the league in Detroit. Yeah. Then you also came back. You took A.J. Brown, which I thought is just – A.J. Brown's been going in the first round in some leagues. I think that's a brilliant pick because – he he was the, on pace to start the season last year. Uh, I, I think I got him like the third round. No, like, you you took Hertz in the third. Or was it the second? Yep. Hertz, yeah, oh, okay. Hertz was in the third round, and that's when you made that pick. That's when I was like, oh my god, dude. Well, the problem is, is like mm-hmm. picking eleven out of a twelve team snake draft like that. Like I have to, I have to do things one round earlier than most people would be mm-hmm. so I can at least kind of get my pick of things and like that's honestly where he should have gone to and you yeah. even if you picked him a few picks early because he goes in the third round but for you to pick him there and pair him with AJ Brown that is awesome man because not only are you going to get all like he's he's his favorite target yeah you got Devonta Smith there all of that but you pick the best gem out of that offense because it's not Saquon Barkley getting the tush push carries. It's going to be Jalen Hurts, and Jalen yeah. Jalen Hurts is the engine that makes that offense run. So your your first five six picks, I really really like those. I was very impressed yeah. with that. Um, and you're going to be a tough team to play against, man. I, I I think that's a really big thing. You, I didn't see you making some of the mistakes that other people made on reaching for guys. Uh, and, and that was really cool. You were very, it seemed at least you were very patient and that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, the guy I took late, late in the draft and I'm, I, I think might have a good season. Brian Thomas senior or Brian, Tom, Brian Thomas jr. Out of Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. I, I think with Ridley gone, I, I think Trevor Lawrence is going to need, need those, that production is going to have to go somewhere. I think he's going to. I think he's gonna have a solid rookie year. Yeah, and we're so. not uh we're both not fans of Babe Davis, so uh No. Yeah. No. Um, but uh any predictions on how you're gonna finish? Well, uh, I well I think we should also let the people know that there's a side bet going in our guillotine league if one of us finishes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. In- we're gonna get to that in a minute. We're gonna get to that okay. in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about the twelve team league? What about how how do you think that's going? I- I, I, I think I'm going to do pretty well. Uh, our friend John. Uh, so my, my team name is Hurts Donut because Jalen Hurts is on my team. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, the only time that team name will change is the week we play our friend John, John Gerard, And then where I'm just going to change my name to You Suck Dummy. Yeah, which is. Because he yeah. calls everyone a dummy. Yeah. He loves calling people dummies. And I, I just need him to get riled up before the week starts. And hopefully that throws him through a loop. Now, listen, I could do the same thing. I think that's a brilliant team name, but I'm going to be my my team name is going to change that week to uh, Fred beat you in a race. Uh, oh, and I, that's I, smart. I just that's smart. Yeah. Uh, I, I just think that's going to really sting and really hurt. Uh, yeah. Notoriously throughout the years, John and I have always had very close games where one of us will win by a point. There was two years ago. I beat him by point one points in a league and that hurt really bad for him. So, yeah. uh, but 
Uh, I'm very excited for that. I think it's gonna it, it's gonna be great. And my team name should I? Am I allowed to say it? I think you can. Yeah, yeah. I think I can. Um. <laughs> so I have Cooper Cup and Patrick Mahomes. So my team name is Cup and Mahomes Nuts. So uh, just uh, I'm a good friend. That's all you need to know. So yes. um, all right. So let's move on to the Guillotine League. And this Ooh. this league, uh, even though ESPN tries to hold us back, uh, the name of the league is After This Week You Can Fuck Off. Uh, and the reason it is is because you will get there's you know after every week there's a team that's going to get chopped. And this year. Uh, we have 18 teams in the league, which is a typical guillotine league. Uh, and the lowest scoring team will be removed and their players will be up for bid uh, following the week. So I congratulated everyone at attending the draft and being on time, and which was impressive. 18 people being able yeah. to draft at the same time. Uh, but I yeah. also uh, let them know that I'm also kind of doing a hello, goodbye type thing. We're letting them know that, you know, even though someone's season is about to begin, uh, it's also about to end too. So, yep. uh, I just curious how you feel about your team and guillotine, because obviously 18 teams, it's much more difficult. Once two rounds have gone by, it's essentially three rounds of a typical 12 team league. Yeah. You know, it's a deep league when I have Tyler Conklin as my starting tight end. Mm. That's that's where we're at. Yeah. Like, if, if, if it's Keon Coleman is in my flex position. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> who, who could be good. You, you don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, and if, if yeah. he's going to be good, it's probably because I've got Josh Allen. So, yeah, yeah. well, I was good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So my guillotine team worries me a little bit. Um, if I can survive like the first couple of weeks, I think I can pick up some players. And I think, I think then we can really be humming along. Mm -hmm. Um, but there is a side bet in our guillotine league between you and I. If one of us gets eliminated week one. Week one. And then after yeah. that, we're safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, I, by I, the way, Pulsers, just want to let you guys know that I didn't know clarification on that. And I didn't want to ask because I felt like that opened up the door uh, that it could go longer for me. Uh, Cause it yeah. could be a very brutal punishment for me. And I don't want that to happen. So, yeah, I'm going to let the people know because I, I, I let you in on this. Mm -hmm. uh, right oh, before. don't worry. I didn't tell you yours, but I've got yours all, all set too. So. I would like to know mine. So yeah. I know. I, so I want to be prepared. You go first. Know. You go first. Okay. So my punishment for Shane was going to be that there was this kebab place we went to in Turkey our first night. And, and Shane knows the one that we're talking about. And he has to go in there right when it opens. Okay. And, and there, he just has to wear something on his shirt. Like a 11 a.m. 11 a.m. What time does it close? 1 a.m. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But if there's still people in the restaurant, they are not going to close. Yeah. Cool. And I, so my punishment for Shane was that he had to go into this establishment, sit there the entire time from open to close, wearing a shirt that just essentially says, like, I suck at fantasy football and what? In Turkish. Yeah, in Turkish. Yep, in Turkish. And that he can uh, get time removed from sitting there. And I think we agreed every 30 minutes. I think that's can, fair. If you eat one kebab, you can get 30 minutes shaved off. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. how many are you willing to eat? Or do you want to just sit there for 14 hours? Well, this is the thing. So it's not as easy as just eating one kebab because when they bring out the plate, there's onions, yeah. there's parsley, there's lavas with it, which is like the yeah. wrap that you wrap the kebab oh. in. Uh, there's yeah. side dishes to it. So if I'm just sitting there eating the meat, I'm not only not going to be making friends there um, with the, the restaurant owners, um, hmm. In fact, I'll probably be making enemies. And believe me, this yeah. this factored into why I chose that uh, that kebab place because I know what comes with every kebab. Yeah. I'm well aware. Yeah. Um, I uh, I also put a little side thing on that too, a little bit of parlay action in that, where I'm hmm. I would have a marker and allow people to write tips or hints on ways that I could improve. Um, yeah. Yep. For next year so that I don't have to do this. So yeah. kind of interesting. And of course, like, 
you know, some videos of you what it, through the hours eating kab- as many kebabs as you can. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Looking, looking very dangerous and, and, and tough. So, uh, yeah. Al will be his punishment if he loses week one. I'm going to get have him go down to the local Dunkin' Donuts. He can, oh, man. He can choose the time that he would like to go. Sure. Okay. Um. So he his options are, and he has two ways that he could take this. He could either eat two dozen donuts. Two dozen. Okay. Or, uh, he can eat one hundred Munchkins. So, Al. Ooh, <laughs> God damn. God uh, damn it. He does not yeah. have an option to leave early. Uh, there will be no time on it. He finished. So wait, I'm eating. Am I eating these donuts in Dunkin' Donuts? In Dunkin' Donuts. Ooh, okay. A hundred Munchkins is doable, but if you choose two dozen donuts, good for you, man. <laughs> that's uh, that's good. I, I think I think that's kind of unfair. Maybe we'll keep it at one. We'll keep it at one. That's fair. Okay. One dozen. Well, to be honest, you're breaking this down already. Like a box of Munchkins. That's four boxes of Munchkins essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh Fuck. I don't really. I boy. <laughs> that could be a what? little dangerous for you. So sure. Um, but I mean, yeah. listen. There, truth be told, and listen, we're just trying to hurt each other in the nicest way yeah. possible, and in a way that like yeah. hugs but hits at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty heading into week one, uh, largely because it's all projections. You hope guys are yep. going to do well. Unfortunately, and and the the worst part of the league is that there's injuries sometimes, and that's the way the NFL goes. Uh, we're hoping that doesn't happen, but there's a good chance that some guys are going to get injured. There will be a team that loses week one. We have not picked a punishment for them. Uh, I don't think it's really fair. It's kind of just going between us. Um, yeah. Though I'd love to impose one on somebody for next year, uh, and it would really make people reconsider whether they want to join the league or not. Um, but um we <laughs> so it's gonna be 100 munchkins yeah jesus um also like any tour any in terms of any fantasy advice listen if you if you drafted a league this past week the guys that are in your starting lineup are pro unless they're injured or on ir or something like that it's probably the squad you're rolling with going into the week because you yeah. don't know you don't know how it's going to be and those are the highest upside guys that you have the ones that you drafted the highest. So unless one of them has a ridiculously bad matchup, roll with it, trust in yourself. You drafted them for a reason. Um, And then, you know, next week we'll be back to break down some of the big performances and some huge disappointments. Yeah. And hopefully one of us isn't eating a million kebabs or a bunch of money, you know? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to figure out a time to do that. Like, if I if I lose, which I, I don't think I'm going to, but no one ever thinks they're going to. Um, if, Boy, if, that, last words. if that does happen, we're going to have to do it during a vacation day. Uh, and sure. We don't yeah, have yeah. vacation until the beginning of November, but we're we're going to have to stretch okay. our stomach in the meantime. We'll... Yeah, good things happen to those who wait. <laughs> that is true um yeah so uh did you want to do trivia this week or we got a question for him or are we gonna wait till next uh, week to crush it you know what i don't have a question this week i i don't so mm-hmm. yeah what was what was last week's question then? i don't think we had a question last week for it okay so right. um actually no we did the quarterback with the most passing yards for the bears in the season or did we oh, do yeah. that one uh, already uh, yeah, we did. Eric Kramer, which I also learned about the Bears. Mm-hmm. They have never had a quarterback throw for 30 touchdowns in a season. Well, that might be done this season, especially the way looking at Caleb Williams. So, and which would yeah. be a rookie record too, by the way. Uh, but we will see what happens with that. But uh, looks like it's a wrap for today, guys. We are going to be back next week. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll be bringing you more Major League Baseball coverage, more NFL coverage. Uh Good chances are, and I got to plug this at the end. Good chance Uncle Rogers get knocked out first week in guillotine. I'll call it. Um, wait, wait, what does his team look like? You know what? I'll, uh, I'm just gonna pull he up. he drafted two running backs from the Broncos. Um, oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, I know he's a cool. fan, but listen, it's it's going it's going real bad for him. So uh, if he wins, be lo- looking out for the the smack talk because it's coming. You know, you know that. Oh like, yeah, if, this if, team is. If he makes it through one week, he is going to he is going to let it be heard by everybody. So, uh, but listen, 
great cool. week. We'll cover more next week when we get back. And uh, Al, I love you, brother. I love you too. Peace. Peace.